Thursday, October 11th, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. A researcher by the name of Soraya Prakash is claiming the majority of phone numbers on Facebook are not safe. One day after the release of Firefox 16, Mozilla said it has temporarily removed the latest version of its browser because of a security flaw. And a teenage hacker who goes by the name of Pinkie Pie will receive $60,000 in prize money from Google for producing the first Chrome vulnerability. Joining us now to discuss the state of security is SiliconANGLE contributing editor John Casaretto. Welcome, John. Good morning. A researcher named Soraya Prakash is claiming the majority of phone numbers on Facebook are not safe, and he provided a demonstration showing how he could collect phone numbers and their corresponding Facebook names with very little effort. Explain to us what Soraya was demonstrating, which he believes was a violation of u user privacy. Yeah, what he was able to do is string together a, a script that... Uh, he could use to um, randomly um, select phone numbers and associate that with people's usernames and other public information. So why is this a security issue? Well, it's a more of a privacy issue than anything else. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's a um, indication of um, some issues that uh, Facebook has had before about public information and a bit of personal practice of uh, um, you know, limiting what information you make public um, on Facebook, and a lot of people are unaware of that, and I think that's really what he's trying to highlight here. Soraya claims he was able to accomplish all of this information gathering without being blocked for a significant period of time because of a loophole in the Facebook mobile app. Can you explain that to us? Yeah, apparently he discovered uh, that there is uh, far less restrictions for, um, on the mobile aspect, on the mobile side of uh, Facebook. So um, eventually, after some uh, repeated at um, attacks, or attacks if you will, but uh, exploiting um, and collecting of information, um, they did, you know, uh, figure out how to, how to block him or block his IP after a certain period of time. Um, but it appears that it, it's a little less restrictive, probably because of the nature of mobility. Soraya contacted Facebook to address the security issue and received a reply from Facebook security spokesperson stating, when you hit a phone number, all you can do via contact importer is request someone to be your Facebook friend. So if that's true, then what are the security implications or the privacy implications here? Well, you still have a, um, a user's name. That, um, that's, that's for sure. I mean, it, it's kind of a reverse in index of uh, phone numbers that he's putting together um, along with names, probably not all that different from whitepages.com or anything else like that, but the fact that, you know, Facebook is on its way to a billion users, um, it, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a little bit shocking, a little bit unnerving, and I think for people that are the privacy experts and uh, concerned about privacy, I think it's a, it's a pretty big issue, and, and we might see some, some continued um, talk about this, about how they're going to fix this. Sarai contacted Facebook several times about the issue, to which Facebook finally replied with this statement. Facebook has developed an extensive system for preventing the malicious usage of our search functionality, and the scenario described by the researcher was indeed rate-limited and eventually blocked. Do you believe Soraya is making something out of nothing, or is Facebook turning a blind eye to a larger security issue here? I think that Facebook, if, if uh, you touch on, the, um, on how we discovered this, I know that I've seen some, uh, um, you know, discover your friends. You know, they, they, I think they see this as a functionality, the ability to add new friends by different means, the same way you can add through um, an email. Um, they're trying to index off of any identifiable information to create new contacts and make it a little more enriching for you. Um, so... I think that uh, perhaps he is making an issue out of it, um, but we'll we'll see what what it is and uh, how it ends up being taken um, from Facebook's perspective. Because um, it's a uh, you know it's it's a significant issue, and uh, you know is it a feature or is it you know or something else? We'll see. Just a day after the Firefox 16 release, Mozilla has removed the latest version, citing a security flaw. Such a quick removal suggests that this might be a serious issue. Can you explain to us what Mo Mozilla believes is the vulnerability? Well, they, uh, 
apparently they have a an indication that there's a significant security bug. Um, and what they're saying is that um, a malicious uh, code, a site um, embedded uh, code that code that is embedded in a site can basically figure out when people are using um, the browser, the new browser that they can figure out what URLs they've been to, um, what parameters that have been in there as well. So it's uh, another thing where, where it could be exploited, and um, but there has been no indication it's been exploited out there in the wild. What are Mozilla's plans to resolve the issue? Is this a flaw in previous versions of Firefox as well? No, uh, it doesn't appear that there, it's a vulnerability that at least they haven't expanded the the uh, recall, if you will, of the uh, bug um, to other versions of Firefox. Um, what we do know is that um, it's been removed, and they're prob they're working on on patching it and releasing that because a lot of people have been anticipating this new release. So um, they're they're reacting pretty quickly to it, and the fact that it was only out for a day and they pulled it back. Um, there, there's quite a bit of assurance that uh, the security team does there, and it seems like they caught this one, you know, just a little bit at, after the bell there. But uh, um, they'll they'll patch this one up and uh, roll out, roll it out, and make it available again. A teenage hacker received a sixty thousand dollar prize from Google for exposing a Chrome vulnerability. Why does Google offer up these types of competitions for hackers? Um, well. That, you know, there's a lot of theories. Uh, maybe they're looking for for talent. Um, I think they like the uh, the idea of proving that their browser is is the best. Um, but for the most part, I think um, what we see is a um, they they put together these efforts to try to try to ensure that um, they're addressing to the community that hey, uh, we patch our systems, uh, we patch our browsers, you know, quickly, so we're able to revise it, we can put out a fix really quick, um, and, you know, other browsers like uh, Microsoft's browser, Internet Explorer, or um, Mozilla, who we just talked about, it takes them a lot longer, a couple weeks to a month, um, so it's essentially controlling the zero-day aspect of, you know, your typical discovery of a flaw and um, putting together a response to it as quick as possible. The largest cash prize was reserved for those who could find full Chrome exploits. Uh, can you explain to us what that means? Yeah, um, Chrome's browser, uh, much like a, a number of the others, is is created um, is built with this concept of a sandbox. So, you know, there there are, are minor exploits where you know certain functionalities, um, user functionalities, you know, give um, the user a bunch of uh, functions. Um, but they're they're put into like a secure um, environment, and, and what the hackers have been able to do in this case is string together a number of these things in order to fully exploit the browser. So um, that's basically how it's put together. So it's the sandbox concept. Tell us about the vulnerability that hacker Pinkie Pie exposed. Um, well, the um, vulnerability that was exposed was um, basically um, it was able to do a little bit more than crash the machine. Um, so it basically by stringing together some def the defenses that were in there, um, the code that was embedded in Chrome was exploited through um, basically a, a, a script attack. Um, so we're... Uh, I think that uh, they keep those things pretty close to their their vest. Um, so um, I, again, they don't publish everything that that's out there. Um, so we'll we'll know a little bit more as uh, the days go on, and perhaps. So this guy Pinkie Pie, he's a 19 year old hacker. Um, his he keeps his identity pretty close to to his vest, and uh, that's you know his anonymity. So that's a pretty interesting aspect is that he's actually sending in these. Um, vulnerabilities and these exploits, um, and it, you know it's a pretty interesting thing. And what does Google do with the information they gather from these types of events? Uh, again, they quickly um, patch these things together, um, and I think that you know, obviously they let these stories you know get out that you know hey this thing was exploited. Um, you know they kind of ran you know rough shot over these. Uh, um, exploits, this inter-process communication channel, these things that come up, um, you know, 
to basically say, hey, we've got a handle on our browser. Uh, we've got a handle on patching this. It's, uh, you know, it's secure and, uh, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a good event. Well, John, we appreciate your time today. Great talking with you. Okay, thanks. And remember, you can follow the news of the day and get the latest breaking analysis here at News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.